formal and legal perspective of India does not permit to appropriate casteism and practice casteism. At the same time, in the practicing level, still it continues, it goes on. Therefore, uh, I would say that as a matter of fact, even after my book, uh, the publication of my book after seven years, still this practice of untouchability, hashtism is very much prevalent, at least in some of the parts of India, especially I can talk about maybe two important um, uh, factors. One is the uh, Dalit Bhagajan movement, which was able to emancipate a lot of people, especially in UP, I mean to say Mayavadi government. At least the Dalit assertion was actually, um, what to say, re I mean, reinforced there. This is one, one factor of it. The second factor I would say, it is about the Yadav. So the people who are the Yadav communities, I mean to say they were also the lower caste people. They were also, were given some kind of an emancipated ideal that they too can come to power. Whatever the Yadavs get it or not, they got it or not, that's immaterial. But they were able to somehow transform their self from the objecthood to selfhood. Mm -hmm. This is what my point of view. Okay. Because uh, apart from the materiality, there's a spiritual self which of course, the Brahminical self has never accorded to the lower caste people. Now these people, I mean, because of Mayavati or uh, Murayam Singh Yadav, or because of, I would say, uh, I mean, Dalu Prasad Yadav, or the lower caste people, they found that they have an emancipated ideal to be cherished. When you think about the trajectory of Christian emancipatory movements here in this country, no doubt, Christians have been able to make a lot many people emancipate from their lower self to higher self. And we have established a lot many schools, uh, colleges, uh, hospitals, and many other kinds of NGOs, if it's what not. At the same time, I would say, I seriously uh, claim that even Christians also in this country, or Christianity, not Christians, Christianity also in this country, has approximated and uh, maybe so-called um, uh, this casteism. Mm -hmm. The sense that even after Second Vatican Council, I know, I mean 1962, so Second Vatican Council was held, even afterwards also 1974 till 1975, uh, the, the lower caste Christians who got converted to Christianity were buried not in the uh, not along with the upper caste Christians. They were having a separate place. So therefore, a kind of an untouchability, if it can be called, okay. which was prevalent there. So it is not only in Christianity I'm talking about. Even Sikhism, for instance. Even other, uh, many other kinds of religions, I mean, we talk about emancipated ideals, you know. They all have, have rather, you know, uh, taken this untouchability as one of the, uh, maybe a big thing, in the moral level, we claim that we are something. But once it comes to the level of practice, you know, we are not. Therefore, but it is not as a strategy rather, but of course only from a moral alliance. Not only Christians, maybe predominantly other uh, religions also. I mean to say, even Sikhism as a matter of fact, does not believe in, um, in, well, in Catholicism. But they do, they do practice, I know. Uh -huh. Because I belong to the, I mean, as I'm teaching in Punjab University, Chandigarh, and I have, uh, when I travel over uh, Punjab, I found that, you know, the lower caste uh, people who came to Sikhism, they are not at par with the Jat Christians, I mean, sorry, the Jat Sikhs. So therefore, uh, morally, there is a kind of uh, alliance is there. It's not a strategic level, I would say, because that is more legal. Level. 